save you so that, listen, no weapon formed against you can prosper. But the devil does take advantage of ignorance. And so that's why we need to study to show ourselves approved workmen who need not be ashamed, being able to rightly divide the truth. Amen. So we need to understand our spiritual authority. God gave it to you. You can use it. You've got the name of Jesus. You can speak his name and you can bind these principalities and powers and all these demons and all these things that are coming against you. You can, you can win every time. They have no authority over you because Jesus paid the ultimate price on Calvary and by his blood, we are winners. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And here's a, listen to this. Here's somebody from Nigeria that's praying uh, uh, that God uh, would remove all the barriers and, um, and all the powers that is trying to hold this person back. And so we pray for you too in Jesus' name. Here's another person from Nairobi that's um, having a problem with, uh, with powers of darkness in Nairobi, especially strong religious spirits. And so I want you to know, I wrote a book called 30 Pieces of Silver that deals with the religious spirit. You know, the religious spirit is one of the first devils, if you will, spirits, if you will, that will try to take you out of kingdom living. So I encourage you not to tap into that spirit. You know what Jesus said? He, he was addressing religious spirits, you know. Jesus wasn't nice and pleasant to religious spirits. As a matter of fact, he was very harsh to them. And uh, Jesus would say things like, he would call them a brood of vipers and things like that. So Jesus was not friendly to people that had religious spirits. Jesus was very compassionate and friendly to people that were seeking him for the right reasons. And so we need to learn about the religious spirit because the religious spirit, Jesus said, not only will not go into the kingdom of God, but they won't let anybody else go in either. And so we need to break the powers of that religious spirit all around us in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, of course, um, this person uh, in Nairobi is talking about the spirit of mind control and Freemasonry and other occultic practices. So I just want you to know that we're praying for you too. God bless you so much for sending in your email prayer request and continue to send them in. I'm praying for you. And uh, some of them will mention here on the air on the program. And then, of course, you can help me pray for the people as well. Hallelujah. All right. We've been talking today about ordering your life. I hope you've been enjoying this. Um, we are products of the decisions we've made. Sometimes we made good decisions, sometimes we didn't. And sometimes our lives can be in a real mess. And one of the things we need to do in order to progress with the things of God is we need to order our life. <clears throat> now, I want to mention this to you before I go a little bit further. I wrote a book called Kingdom Living. And um, I had a revelation that God gave me in July of the year 2003 about the kingdom of God, about our priesthood of kings. We are part of a royal priesthood of kings. And in this book, I talk about ordering your life in the sense of taking your authority and using your authority to live the abundant life that's in the kingdom. And the kingdom is not out there somewhere. The kingdom is right here. And so it is possible for you and I to order our life by understanding that we are sons and daughters, citizens of the kingdom of God, and we can use the word of God to bring the kingdom into demonstration in our life. So I encourage you to get you a copy of that book. And it, it's fantastic material. The Spirit of God anointed it. And so many thousands of people have been helped, and I know you'll be helped too. All right, now let's look at this. Let's look at Abraham for just a minute because Abraham ordered his life with his faith. Let's read what he did in Romans chapter 4. It says here, and of course, I love this part. It says, that is as written, I have made thee a father of many nations. That was the prophecy, and that was the word of God to Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So God prophesies over Abraham's life. He tells him, Abraham, I have made you a father of nations. So this is God's prophetic decree released over his life. Now, you might have a decree released over your life. I mean, God might have spoken to you already. You are there's something inside you that you know that you should be at a different place than you are right now. Well, that happened with Abraham too. Abraham, God prophesied directly to him and told him what his name would be. He changed his name from Abraham to Abraham, and he prophesies that over him, and now Abraham has to believe that. So it says here in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become, hear the words, become, believed, 
that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his 